As the day progressed on September 19th of 1863, the fighting here at Chickamauga was growing more and more intense, forcing both sides to commit more and more men. The next spot to hit the proverbial cyclone of death was right here at Winfrey Field. So before us is Winfrey Field. Now prior to the battle here at Chickamauga, this field belonged to George Winfrey and it would have been covered in weeds and dead corn stalks. Now sensing the need for more men in this growing battle, General George Thomas would dispatch the division of Brigadier General Absalom Bayard forward and his instructions were to rapidly push towards the left and support Colonel Croxton's brigade. Now Colonel Croxton's brigade was several hundred yards in this direction and they were fighting near the area of Jay's Mill. That's where the fighting began here on September 19th of 1863. You had some Confederate cavalry units engaged with Union infantry, and sensing that the fight was growing, Thomas dispatched an additional division. So that next division would begin coming in line of battle in this general area here. You remember you had Van Devere's brigade along the Reeds Bridge Road in that general direction, and a couple hundred yards in this direction, you had Colonel Croxton's brigade duking it out with a Georgia brigade near the Brotherton Road in the Jay's Mill area. So as Bayard's division pushed into the forest of Chickamauga here, in this general area would have been the brigade under Colonel Benjamin Scribner. Now his forces would have come in to line of battle in this general location and they would orient themselves facing Winfrey Field here. Now farther into the woods you had a brigade of regulars under the command of John King and they would slam into the flank of Matthew Ector's Texas Brigade who was engaged with Vandeveer's men about 500 yards in this direction along the Reeds Bridge Road. And in reserve you had Brigadier General John Starkweather. So Scribner's men would come into line of battle in this general direction here and they would engage the Georgia Brigade, who was engaged with Croxton's Brigade up near Jay's Mill. So they would slam into the flank of that Georgia Brigade and rout them, essentially relieving Croxton's men. So like we mentioned at the time of the battle, this would have been a farm. And running along this wood line here would have been a fence line. And once Scribner's men drove back Wilson's Georgia Brigade, they began taking a position along what would have been a split rail fence and it would have ran in this general direction here. We started them to running. We fixed bayonets and charged them. We took nearly 100 prisoners. George Hunter, 2nd Ohio. They can't fight us. The bloody first is too much for them. Colonel Oscar Moore, Commander, 33rd Ohio Infantry. Now, the victory here for the Union was short-lived because you had two brigades of Major General John Liddell's division appearing from the far wood line across from Winfrey Field here. And they would begin advancing towards our current position here on the camera. So in this general direction emerging from the wood line, Brigadier General Edward Walthall's Mississippi Brigade. Now, if you recall in an earlier video, Walthall's men were tasked with taking Alexander Bridge. They ran into the Lightning Brigade under the command of Wilder. So they would be emerging from the wood line directly in front of you here. Now on the left flank of the Mississippi Brigade, you had Colonel David Govan's Arkansas Brigade. And they would have been coming in this general direction here, crossing the Brotherton Road and hitting what would have been the right flank of Scribner's Brigade posted in this area here. Now to kind of orient you, remember Edward Walthall's brigade would be emerging from the wood line here. They would begin advancing in this general direction. Now the Brotherton Road is about 50 to 60 yards to our front. They would stop in that general area to catch their breath, deliver a few volleys, and they would continue their charge into Scribner's men, who were again lining what would have been a split rail fence all along Winfrey Field here. Now panning to my left, again you had Govan's Arkansas Brigade coming through this general area here and they were hitting the right flank 
of Scribner's brigade. No time was to be lost. We were quickly ready. Forward we went, and in a few minutes came into immediate close contact. Brigadier General St. John Liddell. So I moved a little farther back from Winfrey Field. We started the video less than 100 yards through this light foliage here. So again, Scribner's men were forming a line in this general direction along the fence line here. So we are on the right flank of his brigade. And this is the general area where Battery A of the 1st Michigan Light Artillery would deploy six 10-pound Parrots. Now, one thing about Chickamauga is the terrain really isn't conducive to long-range artillery, and Parrot rifles have quite the range. So they would deploy here, and as you can see, their fields of fire really aren't great. And Govan's Arkansas Brigade would emerge from the wood line here directly in front of these guns. So you had the 10th Wisconsin who was acting as infantry support for these guns here. Essentially, they had to refuse their line, which means they essentially had to extend their line, thinning their ranks so their line covers more ground. So they would refuse their line in this direction here. And even parts of the regiment was laying down below the guns of the Michigan battery here as they fired double and triple canister into the Confederate ranks. And you can just imagine the rattling of the guns as they're firing mere feet above your head. And now you got thousands of angry Arkansans charging right at us with the rebel yell. And the 10th Wisconsin and this Michigan battery here were in quite the predicament. So Govin's men would have been charging in this general direction right into the muzzles of the Michigan battery here. And on their monument is a pretty cool depiction here. And I wanted to show you just a brief little snapshot of the fighting occurring right here in this general location. I want to try and put myself in the shoes of one of the infantrymen from the 10th Wisconsin. Imagine you're hunkered down. You have thousands of Confederates, a whole brigade bearing right towards our right flank. And you have the muzzles of the Michigan battery mere feet above us, firing, firing, literally rattling your core. Think about how you would feel. And somehow you have to come to your feet and begin delivering as many volleys as you can towards the Arkansans who are just a couple hundred feet in front of us here. Now, this position would begin to break and they would crumble under the weight of the Confederate attack here, which in turn, the rest of Scribner's position was now compromised. So now you had the Union coming into this position, thinking that they had victory within grasp. Now the Confederates counterattacked. Now the Confederates think they have victory within their grasp. And that is the ebbs and flows here of Chickamauga. The concussion of the guns was terrific, and we were fairly bumped against the guns at every discharge. On they came three double lines deep, then they charged. Our fire fairly stunned them, but we could not reload without rising up. We had to retreat. August Bratnober, 10th Wisconsin Infantry. Now, in command of the Michigan battery here was a man by the name of Lieutenant George Van Pelt. And despite their predicament here, they were able to fire 64 rounds into the gray Confederate tidal wave advancing for us. Now, after the 10th Wisconsin was beginning to break after one or two volleys, Van Pelt, with sword and pistol in hand, stood at the front of his guns and yelled towards the advancing Confederates, don't touch these guns. Moments later, Van Pelt was struck down, killed in this location here. So one thing that I saw in this image that I showed you a little earlier was Van Pelt. And you can see here, it looks like he's being killed on horseback. Well, in reality, he was killed dismounted in front of one of these guns with sword and pistol in hand. The gallant Van Pelt was shot down at his guns, having fired 64 rounds into the midst of the enemy as they came charging down the hill. Colonel Benjamin Scribner. So you had Edward Walhall's Mississippi Brigade hitting the front of Scribner's Brigade, and then you had Govan's Arkansas Brigade essentially routing the 10th Wisconsin 
and the rest of Scribner's brigade, and they came through right in this direction. And if you recall earlier in the video, you had John Starkweather's brigade essentially held in reserve. Well, Govan's Arkansans slammed right into Starkweather's brigade here and essentially routed them. So think about how they were oriented. They were probably oriented facing this direction here, and panning back to my right is where Govan's Arkansans began routing Scribner's brigade and advancing in this direction. So again, they would just emerge point blank into the face of the brigade. So now you had two Confederate brigades routing two Union brigades, and we're going to continue through the foliage of Chickamauga here to our next stop to continue the fight for Winfrey Field. All at once, and without the least warning, a heavy volley was fired into our ranks at a distance of about 30 yards. The Johnnies were low, and therefore could not easily be seen. Oh, shades of Jupiter, what havoc that made. Unknown, by the 21st Wisconsin Infantry. Now, the fight for Winfrey Field progressed into the woods of Chickamauga here, and before we hit our next stop, in the foliage here, I, I wanna show you just what these armies were dealing with. Now, obviously it's probably not exactly like it was in 1863, but it's probably pretty close. So think about the military doctrine of the time. You have that linear warfare. Look at this foliage that they would have had to advance through. Now, obviously it's not impossible, but it's certainly difficult, especially when you're under fire or advancing with 800 to 1200 guys in this general area. So. Imagine trying to advance through this. There's no time to delicately hack your way through creating a trail. So you're essentially just headlong into these thorns and thickets and branches. It's just really one of the major factors here at Chickamauga that really enhances the death here. Because think about your vision. Winfrey Field is probably less than 100 yards in this general direction. And outside of this portion here, if you're looking straight, you can't see the field. So imagine a regiment on the other side of that wood line there just waiting to deliver a volley. And as soon as you emerge, you're essentially gonna get a volley point blank into the face. And that is why this area is so deadly. All right, so we have reached our second destination in our fight for Winfrey Field here. Now, just to reorient you, we originally started several hundred yards in this direction here. So Scribner's Brigade was routed by the Mississippians and Arkansans. Starkweather's brigade was routed and en route to this area were the Mississippians under the command of Edward Walthall. And his brigade would slam into this position here. Now, right before us would have been Battery H of the 5th U.S. Artillery and Brigadier General John King's U.S. Army Infantry, the regulars. They were in this general area. So they came through this area originally and they would strike the flank of Matthew Ector's mixed brigade along the Reeds Bridge Road here. Now he was fighting Van Devere's men, and then John King would come in to support Van Devere, strike the flank, and rout Ector's men here. So King's regulars were not oriented towards the new threat. They were facing in this general direction. When all of a sudden they were told to reorient, so they had to turn this general direction. Keep in mind, we're an entire brigade trying to reorient to a new threat, which is essentially behind us, and they would be routed here by Walt Hall's Mississippi Brigade. So here we have the position of Battery H of the 5th U.S. Artillery, and they also had to reorient facing this general direction here. And by the time they moved their guns facing the new threat, Walhall's Mississippians were right on top of this position and this battery was only able to get off four shots before King's regulars and Battery H here was completely routed. There's accounts that cannoneers were falling left and right as they were trying to load and fire these guns. And only four shots were fired from this location from four Napoleons and two Parrot rifles right before us here. The battery was hardly in position before, the troops on the right giving way. It was exposed to a most terrific fire of musketry from front and flank. At the first fire, Lieutenant Burnham fell mortally wounded. Lieutenant Joshua Fessenden, 5th U.S. Artillery. Now, 
Shortly after the Union forces were routed in this general location, a wounded sergeant of Battery H of the 5th U.S. Artillery would stagger to one of these guns, loaded and ready to be fired with canister. The Confederate infantry here was telling him, don't do it, don't do it. That wounded sergeant would say, kill and be damned, and he would pull this lanyard, obliterating whatever Confederates were in front of one of the muzzles here. And that wounded sergeant was bayoneted and shot several times right here, obviously being killed, but that just goes to show you the savagery of fighting unfolding in the woods here. Now, also killed in the melee here was the battery's commander, First Lieutenant Howard Burnham, and he was killed almost instantly once the Confederates emerged from the thick woods of the Chickamauga Forest here. Now, we touched on it a little bit earlier at Winfrey Field, but again, look at the artillery here and its field of fire. We're at a time where, in warfare, you need to see what you're shooting at here. You didn't have laser-guided munitions or GPS-guided munitions. You had line of sight. That was your best friend here. And if you can't see the enemy, how do you know where to shoot? So look at, I mean, our range may be, at most, you can maybe see... 50 to 75 yards here. So imagine two brigades of Confederate infantry emerging just as you have these guns positioned here. And this battery here was only able to get off four shots before being captured by the Confederate infantry. Now, once Battery H and John King's regulars were routed, the Confederate infantry continued their assault here and they would continue in this direction towards the position of Vandeveer's men positioned along the Reeds Bridge Road. But unlike King's regulars, Vandeveer was able to reorient his men in time and they were waiting for the Confederates. So they would emerge in front of Vandeveer's brigade here and they would be hit with a volley. And essentially their progress was halted in their tracks. And they would begin pulling back towards Battery H and the Brotherton Road. Now, a regiment within Vandeveer's brigade, the 9th Ohio, who was an all-German unit, saw an opportunity here to turn the tide. They staggered the Confederate advance. Now, the 9th Ohio would lower their rifles and begin a charge. And they would charge into the two brigades of Confederate infantry, who by now had suffered considerable casualties, and they were probably pretty exhausted. Remember, this fight started at Winfrey Field along the Brotherton Road, and we are almost towards Reed's Bridge Road in the middle of the forest here at Chickamauga. But the 9th Ohio would advance back towards the guns of Battery H and recapture those guns. And most importantly, now they were in possession of their fallen comrades here. Again, another snapshot of one side gets the early advantage, another side brings up reinforcements and drives back all the gains that that side had just made. So again, that ebb and flow here at Chickamauga and just behind me here is the advance of the 9th Ohio. You know, physically being here, the chaotic nature of the Battle of Chickamauga can really be felt here. And just as one side was beginning to gain the advantage, the other side would deliver a haymaker, completely shifting the momentum here. Well, unfortunately for the men fighting here at Chickamauga, the fighting in the slaughter was only just beginning. <laughs> 